Hi everyone! Have you ever wondered how hackers crack any software? In this video, we're diving deep into the fascinating techniques and tools they use to bypass even the toughest protections. My name is Josh, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro. Fast! <laughs> Ever downloaded a cool program only to hit a big pay now button before you can use it? Annoying, right? Maybe you've even thought about finding a sneaky way to get past that paywall. But have you ever wondered how those locks on software actually work? Or how hackers manage to break them? In this video, we're going to make it simple and show you the secrets behind software cracking. You'll learn how programs check for activation, the tools hackers use to mess with them, and how developers try to stay one step ahead. And here's the best part. These tricks can be used on all kinds of software, apps, games, or even expensive professional tools. So stick around, because you're about to learn how it all works. How software activation works across platforms. To crack any software, it's important to understand that activation mechanisms vary depending on the type of software and platform. While desktop applications often rely on license keys, Enterprise software might use hardware-based activation linked to unique machine identifiers. Meanwhile, games frequently combine online and offline checks, including digital rights management DRM techniques, to protect their content. Some software even employs subscription models where activation checks are tied to recurring payments and server-side validation. The fundamental concept remains the same. All these systems are built to verify ownership and restrict unauthorized access. Whether it's a simple text editor or a sophisticated 3D rendering tool, cracking begins with identifying and understanding the activation process. Advanced Tools and Techniques Hackers Use Hackers employ a wide array of tools and techniques depending on the complexity of the software. Beyond basic disassemblers and debuggers, advanced hackers use decompilers. These attempt to reconstruct high-level source code from compiled binaries, making it easier to understand the software's logic. Dynamic Analysis Tools These monitor a program while it's running, capturing real-time data about its behavior. Memory Dumping By analyzing the software's memory during runtime, hackers can extract encryption keys, hidden algorithms, or sensitive data. Additionally, Hackers leverage techniques like the Keygen creation to generate valid keys and the sandbox environments to test modifications without risking their own systems. These methods allow them to crack virtually any software given enough time and expertise. Breaking online-only software Cracking online-only software presents unique challenges as these programs rely heavily on server-side validation. Hackers bypass these protections by simulating server responses. By reverse engineering how the client communicates with the server, hackers can create fake servers that mimic legitimate responses. Session hijacking. In some cases, hackers intercept and reuse valid authentication tokens to gain access. Network packet analysis. Tools like Wireshark are used to capture and analyze data packets allowing hackers to manipulate or replicate authentication mechanisms. Online services, such as SaaS platforms and multiplayer games, are particularly targeted using these methods. How Hackers Crack Encrypted Software High-security software often employs encryption to protect its code and data. However, hackers use techniques like binary patching to alter encrypted binaries without decrypting them. They also target vulnerabilities in the encryption implementation such as weak keys or predictable algorithms. Side-channel attacks, exploiting leaks in power usage, electromagnetic signals, or timing, are another advanced method used to bypass encryption layers. For example, encrypted DRM-protected games have been cracked by reverse-engineering the decryption process embedded in the game client itself. This demonstrates that, with enough persistence, even encrypted software isn't immune. How Hackers Crack Software Without Access to Source Code Cracking software without access to the source code, often called black box reverse engineering, 
requires hackers to rely entirely on analyzing the compiled binary. They use behavioral observation, monitoring how the software reacts to inputs and outputs to deduce its internal workings. Fuzz testing, feeding the software random or malformed data to trigger errors that reveal vulnerabilities. Code injection, injecting custom code into the software to alter its functionality or bypass restrictions. These techniques make it possible to crack closed source software across a wide range of industries, from games to business applications. A broader look, cracking enterprise and IoT software. Hackers don't limit themselves to cracking consumer software. Enterprise applications and Internet of Things are also frequent targets. For enterprise tools, hackers exploit weak license servers or vulnerabilities in software deployed across multiple systems. With IoT devices, firmware cracking allows access to embedded software that powers everything from smart thermostats to industrial equipment. These hacks often involve extracting and modifying firmware images, bypassing authentication mechanisms, or exploiting over-the-air update vulnerabilities. The same principles of reverse engineering apply, showcasing how the techniques discussed can be scaled to any software environment. How Developers Harden Software Against Cracking Developers have stepped up their defenses to protect software from being cracked. Some advanced techniques include Virtual Machine Protection Running the software in a protected virtual environment that detects and blocks debugging or tampering attempts. Polymorphic code. Code that constantly changes its structure, making it harder to analyze. Code watermarking. Embedding unique identifiers within the software to track piracy. Additionally, subscription-based models combined with regular server-side checks are becoming more prevalent as they ensure software is frequently validated for authenticity. However, even these methods aren't foolproof, as hackers continuously adapt and evolve their approaches. The Legal and Ethical Implications While the technical mastery behind cracking software is fascinating, it's crucial to understand the ethical and legal implications. Using cracked software isn't just illegal, it's dangerous. You're exposing your system to malware, losing access to updates and support, and undermining the developers who create the tools you rely on. Instead of resorting to piracy, consider exploring free or open source alternatives that offer legitimate and safe ways to access similar functionalities. The techniques hackers use to crack software are undeniably impressive, but they serve as a reminder of the ongoing battle between security and exploitation in the tech world. From reverse engineering simple offline checks to bypassing advanced encryption in enterprise software, Cracking methods are as varied as the software itself. However, as users, we have the responsibility to make ethical choices and support legitimate software development. If you found this deep dive into software cracking insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's keep exploring the fascinating and legal side of technology together. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.